So for number one, we have three parts. Does anyone want to volunteer to do any of the three, A, B, or C? Otis, pick one, think that one. Anyone else want to volunteer to do another? Yeah, you can do the first one. Don't let your paper touch the book. Do we agree or disagree with Otis's answer? Why? or y. So instead of putting the 2 here, we should be putting it in for x, because this is where x value. So if you did that for all of these, and then you would have to make sense. Okay, so if we're given f of some number, that is your x value. So put that in for x, and then simplify it. Do we agree or disagree with Regina's answer? Agree. Anyone disagree? This should be the right answer. f of x equals 3 or f of 0 equals 3, either or. Okay. Any takers for b? what you're given and what you are solving for because that will change the whole problem if you solve for the wrong thing. So please keep that in mind. Be careful with that. Okay. Number two, we're given a graph, g of x. We have to find g of three. Anyone want to do that one? So remember for your graph, you're looking at one, this is your x, so when x is 3, 
what is your y value? And that would be 1. So g of 3 equals 1. There's no real work for you to do. You just have to follow the lines. Where do they match? Um, three, I'm going to put in the calculator. Remember that you can use the calculator, soft Desmos, for these. You have to find the range of these three numbers. So I'm going to go into my y equals, clear it out, put in one half. Um, you may need to reset your calculator because um, my classes yesterday were doing apps and things on it. So I'm going to put this into here. I am still going to set it up, and I'll do that here in a second. Um, and then go into my table, second graph. And I need to find negative 2, 3, and 8. So I would set it up like this. Right, a little small. Uh, 1 half times negative 2 squared minus 3 times negative 2 plus 1. 1 half times 3 squared minus 3 times 3 plus 1. And then the last one we're going to do up here. Uh, 1 half times 8 squared minus 3 times 8 plus 1. So negative 2, 3, and 8. Okay. When x is negative 2, y is 9. X is 3, Y is negative 7 halves. And at 8, it's 9. So we would have, in curly brackets, the 9 repeats itself, so we're only going to put that once. Negative 7 over 2. Would be our range. Just to make sure that I didn't mess up. So sometimes your domain and range may not match depending on the function given. Questions on two or three before we do four. Otis. Can we actually solve by hand the one where we indicated three? Mm -hmm. so let's see, that would be nine minus nine plus one. This would be nine over two minus so eight. Be nine over two instead of being four point five. It would be the same thing. Nine over two is four point five. Okay. So if you had negative three point five, that would also work. Okay, that's what I have. Okay. Um, it also depends on how you put this in here. So if you put it in as fractions, you're going to get out fractions. But if I put in... I'm going to do that. Okay. 0.5x squared. What was the rest of that? Um, minus 3x plus 1. Yeah. So if I go to the table, now they're all decimals. So it really depends on how you put it in there. I would say... Put it in as fractions, though, because if you get repeating decimals, then you have to figure out what that is as a fraction. Um, did you need me to finish this? No, it's okay. okay. It's, it's all All right, and then for number four, did anyone want to try that one? Here, go for it. You can either erase my work or write around to either work. Okay.
say on each of these projects there are always like a challenging problem, this or that. Awesome. Anyone else try this problem? <laughs> Let's give Dia a round of applause because that is right. right. So in this problem, you had to do two things. One, figure out what K was. So they give you H of 1 equals negative 5. So set it up like an equation. Start solving for K. Put in 1, put in negative 5 solve it, get k, then after you get k, you have to go back and figure out what is our h of negative 4. So after we found k to be negative 8, actually finding our answer. So it was a lot of work. So good job, Dio. Okay, questions on that one? All right. Um, on it just in case, so there's supposed to be sleep, freezing, freezing rain, or it might just rain tomorrow, I don't know. Um, in the event that I wouldn't see you on Friday, would we like to just draw names today? Or still wait on it just in case? So, still draw names today. Raise your hand. Okay, that's half the class. More than half the class. So, we'll still draw names today. Um, and then if we are still in school Thursday and the schedule doesn't change, we just won't draw names on Friday. This is how we'll do that. Alright, today we're doing the last lesson in this unit, which means when we come back we'll be quizzing and testing, but we'll review and stuff like that first. You guys also have the review with all your stuff as well. These are written kind of small, but I'll um, say them out loud just in case you can't see them. So write down these definitions. You may know them already. For an x-intercept, graphically, it's the points where the graph crosses or touches or intersects 
the x-axis. And you don't have to write that word for word. You can summarize it. Algebraically, it's the point or points at which f of x or y is 0. So graphically, it needs to touch or cross or intersect the x-axis. Algebraically, y needs to be 0. Y-intercept is opposite. Graphically, the point or points where the graph crosses, touches, or intersects the y-axis. Algebraically, the point or points at which x is 0. So algebraically, it has to touch or cross or intersect the y-axis. Algebraically, x has to be 0. Those are going to be major points you need to know when we start doing this. Yes, Regina? So, um, the y intercept is the same as the second I was raised to boxes? Yes. They're basically both the same except for the very last part x axis, y axis, y equals 0, x equals 0. They're opposites for that part. Um, I'm going to scroll this down just a little bit more because there's one more thing you need to write. Um, when we write our intercepts, they're going to be written as ordered pairs, so x, comma, y. You don't have to write that full sentence. You can just say something about it. And when we talk about x-intercepts, they have interchangeable words, just like domain and range. X-intercepts are also called roots, solutions, and zeros. You don't have to write the definition of why. You just need to know that they're also called roots, solutions, and zeros. I'll tell you why, but you don't have to write this part. You can if you want to. Um, roots are usually with quadratic functions, so bless you. When we get to quadratic functions later, we'll be talking a lot about finding the root which is finding the x-intercept. Solutions, as we were doing with solving, we get a solution, and it makes the equation true. And then zeros are also called that because if we were to put it back in, it would make our y equal to zero. So once you finish writing that, again, you don't have to write it word for word, summarize, bullet point it, write whatever makes sense so that you remember. Then put your pencils down for a second so I know you're done. So when we find our x and y intercepts, we're going to, one, put dots at where they cross the x and y axis. If you need to outline them, you can. If you want highlighters, there are some back there. So your x-intercept would cross your x-axis right here. What would that point be? What is two? Two, and then we have to write it as an ordered pair. So, what is your y value? Right here. Zero. Zero. So, 
So anytime we write our x-intercepts, it's always going to be number comma zero, because our y is always zero. So y-intercept is at negative three, yes. How would we write that? Go ahead, Arnold. Zero negative. Because our x is always zero for our y-intercepts. So as long as you don't switch those, then you're fine. Questions on that one? Great, let's do another one. Is, that'll be our next unit. We're not there yet, but we're getting there, yes. Yes. Now, um, depending on the function, we can have multiple x-intercepts, we can have multiple y-intercepts in general, but that may or may not make it a function. So like 3 would not be a function because it's going to have multiple y-intercepts. But because we have multiple x-intercepts, that would still be a function. Yeah, we're going to do 2. So here we have two x-intercepts. The order in which you write them doesn't matter as long as you write them both. So what are your two x-intercepts? Otis, you can say one of them. So one comma zero and one comma one. Oh, minus, minus. Yeah, minus. Um, I thought I updated this, but yeah, sure. On yours is one, on mine is two. I'm going to put yours, not mine. And then your y-intercept, where does it cross the y-axis? Otis? Yeah, it is. So we would just like make up a decimal, 0, 1, 1, 5. Sure. I think that's why I changed it, so it should be this and not that, but it's all right. Just to kind of spiral back to some of the other things we were talking about. For number one, is this a function? Yes. No. What would the domain be? Looking left to right, what would our domain be? All row numbers. All row numbers. What would our range be? Also all row numbers. Um, function notation is another question. Same thing for two, and then we'll move on. Is number two a function? Mm -hmm. Yes, that one should be. It passes the vertical line test. Just because it has two x-intercepts doesn't mean it's not a function. What is our domain for this one? Assume it has arrows. My row mm -hmm. So all row numbers again. What about our range? Otis? Um, what about it? Is it only equal to 1.5? Yes. What is this part oh, below less it? Than or equal to. Less than or equal to. Y is less than or equal to 1.5. Yes. Right? So keep those things in mind. Um, don't lose them just because we haven't talked about them, especially over rate. Right? Any other questions on how we find x and y intercepts from a graph? Let's go on to the next page. So now we're going to be finding them algebraically. We're going to do a couple of these examples, the x and the y. So let's start with number one. I will say the x will be more work than the y, and then I'll show you why that is. So for um, the x, what we're going to do is take our y or f of x and set that equal to zero. Since we know y has to be 0 for our x-intercept, if you want to change it first, you can. So you know 
know what we're putting it into that says y equals and then the rest of that. X intercept, our y has to be zero, so I'm going to change that to zero equals. And then I'm going to solve for x. So I would solve by doing what? Then, I'm, now, we still need to write this as an ordered pair. How would we do that? And go ahead. Two and what? Zero. Zero. So in things like this where you have to solve for it, you need to label which one you just solved. Because you could write it down, but I don't know if you know which one it is. So label that this is your x-intercept and then write your ordered pair. Before we do our y-intercept, do we have questions on that one? If you need more space, because these are really close together, grab more paper. Um, there might be a blank page on the back, either there. So now we're going to do the y-intercept. We're going to put 0 in for x. So you can leave this f of x, you can leave it y, it doesn't matter. But if I put 0 in for x, the 4 times 0 just becomes 0. How would we write that as our order pair? All of these problems you will need to show me your x intercept work. Your y intercept, not so much. If it's in this format, where we have some y equals some number x and then another number or a constant. Whatever the last number is, that's going to be your y-intercept no matter what. Some of you may start to recognize that from slope and things like that, and we'll talk more about that later. So if you see it in this format, you don't have to do the work for the y-intercept. You just say it's 0, negative 8, and go on. You can still do the work for it. It's just not necessary. Okay, questions on that? We're going to do one more of these and then move on. Let's do four. Um, because we don't have to do the work to find the y-intercept, tell me what would the y-intercept be? It would start off zero in your order pair. But what would the actual y be for this? Because we're looking at that last number. Then we just need to do our work for the x intercept. So if you want to switch it to y and then switch it to 0, you can. If you want to just switch it to 0, that's fine. Just don't put 0 inside the parentheses. So we would start solving this by adding 6 to both sides. How would I get rid of the 2 thirds? We could divide, but we don't like dividing by fractions. Jada? Multiply that on both sides. Multiply that, tell me what 
So then how would we write that x intercept? Have any questions on that one? Then there are some where, like, we haven't talked about how to find the zeros of these yet. Later in this class, we will, um, but not right now. So I'm going to show you how you would do this on the calculator. Very similar to what we were doing before, but a little different. So we're going to do numbers 2 and 7. Take number 2, put it into your y equals. If there's anything in your y equals, clear it out. I'm also going to show you how to put this in Desmos as well. So for number 2 we'll do in the calculator, number 7 we'll do in Desmos. Then you're going to graph it. If you can't see it in here, you may need to zoom out. You should be able to see what your x intercepts are by just looking at it, but sometimes maybe it's like decimal, then it just looks really close, so we're not sure. Um, so just to be safe, so these steps are on the side. I'm just going to do them. You can follow along with me, but do this with me. Um, hit second trace. Which of these do you think we're looking for if we're trying to find our x-intercepts? That would be where they cross. So intercept and intersect are two different things. What's another word for x-intercept? Zero. So we're going to go into zero, two. And then it asks you, I don't, I don't remember if we've done this or not in this class. Um, it asks you for a left bound. So pick just one of them for now. Let's say I'm looking for this one on the left that I think is negative three, but I just want to make sure. I just need a number to the left of this. Any number works, negative 4, negative 5, negative 10, it doesn't matter. So I'm going to type in negative 4 and hit enter. A line should appear. That is now your left bound. We're not looking past that line. Now we need a right bound. So something to the right of this, but that can't go past your other one. So somewhere in here, it doesn't matter which one, negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, any of those work. Let's say I choose negative 1. Type that in, I hit enter. Now it's looking between those two bars to try to figure out what is your x-intercept. It'll say guess, but we don't want to do that. We want the calculator to do the work, so we would hit enter again. And it would tell us our zero. Negative three, zero. Just in case you missed that, I'm going to do it again, but for the other side. So I have to go back into second trace, go back into zero. Now I need a left bound of this one. Someone give me a number that would work. Oh, this one. One would work. And then I need something to the right of this. Someone else give me a different number that would work. Then hit enter. And it would tell me what that zero is. So then for these problems, you would just say did in the calculator and write down your two zeros. We still need to find our y-intercept, but we'll do that here in one second.
For our y-intercept, it's a little different. We still go into second trace, but now we're looking for value because we want to know when x is 0, what is our y value. So here we're looking for our y-intercept, so we would put in 0 here, hit enter, and it would tell us what that is. 0, negative 30 would be our y-intercept. Of course, Desmos is a lot easier, less steps, but you won't have that on our test. On the S well, yes, on our test, no. But while you're practicing, I'm going to put 7 into Desmos just so you see what happens. And then while you're practicing, you can be using Desmos. So it will draw it for you. It will have points as to where your x and y intercepts are. So you can just click those and figure out what those are. Oh, it does. So we have three x intercepts? It depends. So later in algebra 2, you'll learn this. However many, whatever the highest x one is, tells you how many intercepts you may or may not have. Okay, so do we write all three? Yes. So y intercept is 0, 8. Negative one zero, two zero, and four zero. And so it really depends on the function. Could have one, could have two, could have three, some have four or five. Regina. So how do you have two y and two? Um Unless it's like a circle or a rectangle, we should only have one. Something that comes back to itself. We should only have one. Okay. Questions on how to use the calculator, Desmos? There's one last thing I have to show you and then we're done. Right. Go to the next page. So this is similar to what we were just doing, not on the calculator, but before that, the format is just different. So the work is a little different. So we're gonna do one and four. The rules still apply if we're looking for an x-intercept, our y has to be zero. If we're looking for a y-intercept, our x has to be zero. So if we're looking for x, intercept, we would put 0 in for y, and then we'd solve. This would become just 0, so we have 8x equals 24, divide both sides by 8, so that our x-intercept is what? So notice I didn't put x equals 3 and then write it as an x-intercept. If you want to skip writing x equals 3, that's fine. We would do the same process for y, but they've now been switched. So it would be 8 times 0 plus 3y equals 24. 
and then you can keep going. As you start to get the hang of this, if you know that you're going to put 0 in for 1, this is going to become 0. You don't have to write 0, you can just skip that part. Write the next part and solve for y. But if it makes you feel better, you can still put the 0 out front. What would our y intercept be? Now, this problem was coincidentally, they had 8 and 3, excuse me, here, and our x and y intercept were 3 and 8. That doesn't always work. It's not always the case. So still do the math just in case. So for these problems, you do have to do the work for x and y. The other ones, you don't have to do the work for y. Questions on that one? Does not matter which one you do first, x or y, they just both have to be there. But for number four, if I put zero in for y for this one, what happens? It just becomes x equals 56. Mm -hmm. So that would be your x and z. Some x-intercepts can be large, but if you are working with, with really small numbers and you get a really big number, maybe double check your work. What would our y-intercept be? When you are on Khan Academy, you'll see that there are two on intercepts from a graph and intercepts from an equation. You'll also see the due date on those aren't until January 6th. That doesn't mean wait until then. It just means you have until then. So you could easily get those done, not have to worry about anything over break. Or you could wait, but I would not advise waiting. Okay. Before I let you practice, go through... Any of the pages, any of the problems we did not do, are there any we want to see, go over, have questions about? those type of problems you wouldn't. So if you got something that was squared or to the third because we've never solved those, you would just do it in the calculator. And again, I don't remember what's on the test now. Any other questions? class is yours to do one of the following. Khan Academy, let's do one Friday. If you want to do the Khan Academy, let's do in January, work on that. If you want to keep working on x-intercept stuff in here for more practice, do that. You also have the review, so you could start working on that. Whatever you wish of those, be working on any of those, let me know if you have any questions. Khan Academy. You guys can work together, move around. Oh.